So the first thing you'll notice with the new 2021 Maxxis is the front grille here. When we come to the side, there are a few minor changes here as well. So the big change though is up here, but you can see what I mean. It just, it sucks, right? Hey guys, Alex here from AlexFigures.com and behind me I have the new LDV T60 Maxxis. This is the 2021 version. I've had this for about a month or two now, I've done 2000 Ks on it and uh, I wanted to give you a quick review, first impressions, feedback. If you have been following my stuff for a while, you may have seen my 2017 LDV T60 Ute review, which was also red and um, you may be thinking, oh, is this the same vehicle? No, it's not. I just got the new one also in red but I, ha I did use that for about three years so what I wanted to do in this video is compare this new version with the old one and um, let you know whether it is worth going with the new version or if you're better off just getting a secondhand um, older version and uh, I also wanted to run through the key differences between this version and the other version and um, my thoughts in the last month or so of use all right let's go have a look around the vehicle all right, so before we get into my review, let's run through the key specs and features of the LDV T60 Maxxis. Now it comes in two versions, a base model and a luxury model. I have the base model. The luxury model is a little bit better inside. It has um, nicer seats, uh, electric adjustments, electric heating, push start button. It's also got the electronic diff lock, um, which probably is the only reason I would consider spending the extra three or four thousand dollars on New Zealand to get the luxury model but I couldn't really justify it um, otherwise mechanically they're the same looks wise they're all the same I believe no they're not I think looks wise the uh, luxury has a sports bar the thick chunky bar on the back uh, I'll show you that when we get around to the back later on um, it comes in six speed auto and a six speed manual I have the automatic uh, it has a 2.8 litre turbo, turbo diesel engine putting out 110 kilowatts and 360 nanometers which is on the lower end of power for today's utes but uh, you know if you look at utes over the last 10 20 years or so it is it's just plenty fine and uh, again check out my other video which I done um, a month or two ago where I go into a deep dive about the ute performance I want to keep this one more on the differences between the Maxxis and the Maxxis 2021 version and the original T60 2000 2017 video. Um, it has uh, part-time four-wheel drive, so you've got two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low. It isn't an all-wheel dri all -wheel drive version that, say, the Mitsubishi has, or um, I think the uh, Amarok has as well. So it is just your old-school uh, select for four-wheel drive, otherwise stay in rear-wheel rear -wheel driving. It has all of the modern um, safety features that you would expect. I'm going to rattle some of these off here because I, I just simply couldn't remember them. Uh, you've got ABS, EBD, EBA, traction control, stability control. Uh, you've got driver and passenger airbags, side airbags, full-length curtain airbags, and it got a five-star rating. Uh, safety rating now this once a rating came out uh, that was why I decided to buy this all this years ago because um, I was always concerned about safety ratings in some of these Chinese lower cost uh, vehicles um, when they when LDV got the five star and in fact they had a score better than some of the high-end utes I was sold I mean and again I um I don't want to go into all of that because I did in that other video so go check that out first if you want to I'll wait and come back here it has a 1188 litre rear tray we'll go and have a look at that soon it is one of the neat features of these utes and comes with a five year or 130,000 K warranty which is great uh, especially if you're a little bit nervous about buying these utes um, they are reasonably new to the market they're saying that three four five years now they've probably been out um, it's part of the reason why I traded in my 2017 one because the warranty was coming uh, about to run out and um, I did have a few technical issues which again check out that other video to see all about that finally it's currently available at the time of recording in New Zealand for about thirty one thirty two thousand dollars plus just an on-road cost for the base model which is your standard t60 not the luxury uh, I think that might be a manual uh, or, or I can't remember exactly but you're looking around the 32 33 low to mid 30s uh, to get started with the t60 I paid, by the way, they also do a 2% or 1.9% interest um, rate, financing rate at the moment as well, which is pretty good. I paid $42,000, including just, that's New Zealand price. Uh, I ordered that in February 2021. For $42,000, that got me tents. Uh, it got me the bonnet protector on the front. It got me a tow bar installed. Um, and I don't know what the deal was with the wheels and the tires, but I did get the slightly more gruntier all-terrain wheels. I think that was part of the Maxxis 
promo that is running at the moment. Uh, I think they were part of the price. Anyway, 42,000, you could easily get it for under 40,000. Of course, if you're getting it for farm or um, commercial purposes, you're gonna get that GST saving as well. So one final thing is I did order it at the start of February. I didn't pick this up until late April, so it was about three months waiting. And I think those wait times have got even worse uh, given what's going on in the market these days so you know expect to wait three to six months for a new you you might be able to pick up a second hand one a lot quicker though so the first thing you'll notice with the new 2021 maxis is the front grill here uh you'll see the the word maxis along the front it, it's complete well i don't know if it's completely redesigned but it is a new look the old one didn't have that sort of aggressive looking grill um otherwise lights uh everything else is pretty much standard from the front i do like the new maxis it it's you know, it makes it stand out when you're driving around and you see these ones. Um, you don't see the badge, the LDV badge, which used to confuse people. I guess now people will start seeing Maxxis and associating um, this ute as a Maxxis ute rather than maybe LDV. Um, but yeah, that is nice. Uh, otherwise, nothing really to report on here. When we come to the side, there are a few minor changes here as well. So again, these are quite minor, uh, but I will point them out. The little T60 badge up the front here. I believe that used to be silver, uh, now it's black, slight difference. I think there's some color changes with the side mirrors here. Uh, this used to all be black, uh, now you have the red coloring, which is, which is cool. The roof rails up the top here, the previous model, they were black right through, or the, at least my model, uh, which was red and black as well, had the same coloring system going on. This one's silver, I personally, I, I don't like that. I mean, it would have been nicer if that was all black. Um, the footstep here on the side, uh, again, maybe it doesn't matter with the silver and silver, but it, I don't know, silver, black and red, I, I think doesn't go that good. Uh, it would be really neat to see this all black and see all that all black, um, especially with the wheels and that, but hey, it is what it is. Um, at the back here as well, this uh, window guard, rear window guard, this is what I was talking about before. When you get the luxury model, you get the big chunky um, window protector. They call it the sports bar. Personally, I don't like that. Uh, because I find, well, it's funny, because someone saw this and they're like, oh, th this version is ugly. The big sporting ones just look so much better. And I'm like, yeah, it, maybe it does, but um, I'm a practical man at heart, I guess. And these are so much more practical because you do get uh, the cross beams in the middle there to protect the window. And you get more anchor points if you're using tie downs or, you know, like I had to pick up a washing machine or a dishwasher the other day. You can strap it to the back and tie it in um, and it's easy to do. Whereas the other one, sure, you can do it, but there aren't as many tie points. Uh, the straps can slip and all that. Um, and I can put things on the back as well. All right, so the wheels here are from BGW Wheels Black. Um, you've got some all-terrain tires on there as well. All right, here at the back, we have the same design as the previous model. Nothing really um, interesting to talk about here. The only thing that I did notice to be different was the tow bar comes with a little shin saver on there, which is which is neat. The other one didn't have that. Not that I've ever had to use it. Um, the big change, though, is up here. So come up here and have a look. And this is a bit of a gripe that I do have with this new ute. So um, let's take a look. So the deck tray or deck liner uh, comes standard in the price which is which is one of the pluses that LDV has I know um you know when I was looking at Mitsubishi Trident and some other utes uh, you have to pay extra for this and by the time you add on your tow bars and your tents and all that it starts adding up so that was that was a nice feature of the LDV T60 and I explained that in the other video I this new model again comes with the tough liner however I got a bit of a shock when I um picked it up and uh if, you, if you've used utes or watched my other video, you probably know what I'm going to mention. The tough deck liner, whatever you call it, doesn't come over the edge here. So you have a metal exposed edging, which if you're someone that is using this ute for around town, putting sports equipment in the back, or perhaps you're going to put a canopy or um, a hard cover on the back for, for lockup, probably doesn't bother you. But if you're someone like myself who's going to use it for putting poles in for fencing or firewood or gardening products whatever um it's soon going to bother you because it's more likely to scratch to, uh you're going to dent it uh, you're just going to damage it and it's going to look ugly and um you're always going to be paranoid about it which is something i wasn't worried about with the other ute like i was i wouldn't say i was rough with it but i used it like a ute and um it took some knocks but hey it was pretty heavy duty however with this i mean it sucks like it really does suck in fact let me show you this I've used it for some firewood just recently and uh, already there's a dent in here. Um, fortunately, it didn't take any of the paint off because otherwise, you know, you've got to 
rust issue there, but you can see what I mean. It just, it sucks, right? So when I purchased it, I actually asked him, I said, hey, um, can you get that as an aftermarket add-on? He wasn't aware of it, the dealer, my local dealer, he wasn't aware of anything. He said, try your Super Cheap and Repco and that. So I went into Super Cheap, asked them, they looked in their system, uh, had all the parts and whatnot for LDV aftermarket, and um, unfortunately, it wasn't an option as well. So that's a bummer. Um, someone said, you know, you just put some heavy duty plastic on there. Another guy said, um, get some uh, nice, you know, checkered sort of metal covering around it, which which is, yeah, something I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do one of those because it's just gonna take a beating otherwise. Um, and I don't want this ute to be something that I'm always, you know, trying to protect. I just wanna use it, right? Um, so yeah, that is something I'm gonna have to do. Unfortunately though, it's an extra cost, you know? I wouldn't surprise me if that's 500 bucks, maybe even more. And, uh, you know, you're trying to, you, a lot of people are attracted to these utes because of the price point. It is, it is a good value and comes with a lot of um, features. And the rain's coming down, so we're gonna take a quick pause there. Now the other problem I had with the previous shoot was all the material getting stuck down here. Um, unfortunately nothing's changed with this setup, which is a bummer because that was quite a bad problem. You'd get a build up of compost, wood chip, bark, mulch, all the things I was transporting in here and it would just get stuck down in that tray. And just looking at it now, yeah, it's exactly the same system, which is which is just silly. And I think that impacted the rear parking sensors on my previous ute. Um, so I don't want that to happen again. Now, a few of you guys gave me some excellent recommendations about putting some rubber down there or riveting something on here. So when I take this in to sort this out, I'm going to ask about that. Otherwise, I'll just do something myself. As well as not having the top covering on the deck liner with this, we've also lost two anchor points. So in the previous model, you had one, two at the back, two at the front, and actually two on the side in the middle here, up top. Now those side ones weren't that strong, they were bolted into the deck liner itself, so they had a bit of pull in them, but I ratcheted a few of them up quite tight, and um, you know, they were, they were strong enough to, that you'd use them. Now we've lost those middle ones in this new model with this new deck liner, which is a bummer, um, because they were handy. They weren't great those ones because they weren't bolted into the frame, but they, you could still use them. Uh, so now you've only got four, which which again is a bit of a blow, but that's why I do like the rear um, window protector because you do have those other anchor points in the middle there and on the top. Um, you've got the flip up roof racks. I've got one up over there. Uh, you, you know, you can anchor more things to that, which, which makes it a little bit um, more practical. But yeah, losing those other anchor points is a bummer. The design in the tray here is a little bit different as well. Um, to be honest, it's probably a little bit better because it's it's square and, and flat. The other one had a lot of curves to it, um, you know, so you couldn't really sit things on it, especially over the wheel guard. Otherwise, there's nothing really else to report on here. Now this change is quite a big change and you may be wondering why I've left it to the end. Um, so what exactly is it? It is the new Walkinshaw tuned suspension that this vehicle has. So the previous one, in, the, in my previous video, I talked about how the suspension was very, very soft, um, very bumpy, and you really, if you didn't have a load in the back, it was ridiculous how bumpy it was. So to give you an example about that, remember this is the previous Gen 1 2017 version. Uh, there was a piece of road that I'd travel on, you'd come down a, a hill, and then you'd hit a bridge, and then it would sweep and come back up. And there was some roadworks that were done poorly, which is the case here in New Zealand, and you'd hit that at 100 k's, and you'd start bouncing and then you'd go over this bridge which was a little bit narrower and of course you're bouncing and it's curved and then you'd come up the hill and every time i'd come up to that piece of road i would i'd, I'd slow down and I'd, I'd be two hands on the wheel you know full focus on the road because you'd be bouncing 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 all the way through that curved bridge and if you were passing a big cattle truck or something on that bridge it was a little bit nerve-wracking um that was with the previous one. It was ridiculously bouncy. A lot of people talked about it. Um, it was a common fault of the LDV T60. Now, LDV have partnered up with Walkinshaw and they have tuned the suspension in the New Zealand and I believe Australian vehicles um, to improve it for New Zealand and Australian roads and conditions. So that was one thing I was really excited about when I um, picked up this vehicle. So what do I think of it? Well. <laughs> I think they've gone too far. They've gone from being too soft and too bouncy to too firm and too rigid. In fact, it's um, I've had uh, some BMWs. Uh, one of them was quite a nice, like M Sport tuned um, little hatchback, the one series there, and it had some big wheels, run flat tires, 
and that thing was was ridiculous it was you'd feel every little bump on the road and it was very stiff uh, it handled amazing when you were driving but it was it wasn't really a comfortable um, passenger car let's say it like that but it was a great driving car this <laughs> this is I'm not gonna say it's comparable handling wise but in terms of that rigidity and stiffness and feeling every little thing on the road this is similar maybe not quite as bad you do have quite thick tires here obviously we don't have run flat tires on on the ute but it is, it's hard, it's a hard suspension. Uh, so now going back to that sweeping bridge with the bumpiness that the previous ute had, this one here, I still I still tense up when I get to that point because of how hard I hit that um, little ridge uh, that the road workers haven't smoothed out. You hit that pretty hard, it's like a really solid judder. Um, obviously you're not getting the ongoing bouncing as you go through that corner, but it is a bit of a jolt. Um, so it's not perfect it's it's better than the previous model and i think it's safer and of course it's going to handle a lot better but it's not it's not perfect all right so inside the ute nothing has changed from the previous model uh same look same feel everything works exactly the same way i was, was kind of hoping there'd be some changes but yeah there isn't uh you still got your large 10 inch touchscreen um console with apple carplay and android carplay i think that's what, what it's called uh previously i did have a few issues with that one um software wise i this has been pretty good i can't fault it it's still not you know super smooth like say you know bmw i entertainment system but hey it does the job most of the time i just use um carplay and it's all good it's not perfect uh but it, it's good enough um I haven't had any issues with the battery. I haven't had any issues with the aircon, which were you know, big issues I had with the other model. So that is all good. And again, that's what I was hoping for with the new and improved model. You, you hope all those bugs from the first gen have been ironed out. Uh, there's still plenty of space in the back. Again, nothing's changed. Um, so, you know, it's great for storing the children or gear or whatever. So one of the things that has changed with this vehicle is improved radio reception. So this has uh, a new and improved antenna for radio reception and it is a million times better. So previously, even in town, I couldn't get a stable quality um, radio signal. It was just ridiculous to the point where I just didn't even bother using it because it would just, it just get too frustrating. Uh, and we did try some things at the mechanics, you know, trying to improve it. In fact, I just think it made it worse. So the new one is amazing. Out here in quite a rural area, lots of hills and whatnot, it's still crystal clear, which is great. And what they've done is they've actually mounted the uh, antenna onto the windscreen here you can just see that in shot um so previously there was nothing up there and that is why i can now get a nice crystal clear reception so that is great as you can see on the dash here it is a semi-electric system which is neat uh and you will note system failure in the middle there and the engine light flashing which was quite concerning this kicked in when i was driving home after picking up the vehicle um turns out it's related to the tire pressure monitoring system so i don't think the previous vehicle had that so when i saw it, this one had it i was like oh that's a cool feature and then yeah it's given out it's given out so i called the dealer and um they said i'll oh, bring it in and we'll just cut the sensors and i was a bit puzzled by that and they said oh it's something to do with the tires being a different diameter or the wheels and um thus the system doesn't work and i, I don't know i mean that that's a little bit of a frustration because surely you can just program it to, to account for the different size otherwise um yeah i'm just going to have the system alert error which is going to come up all the time and getting a bit of a bummer and you can see down the bottom there 2229 k's um if i flick through the med menu here average fuel co economy since i've had it 11.1 .1, which was higher than the previous one i guess maybe that's just how i've been driving it lately i'm not too sure um a little bit higher than I'd expect, but um, you know, it is it is what it is. All right, I think that's everything. If there's something I've missed or you want more clarification on, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, yes, I've only had this for two months or so. I've only done a few thousand Ks out of it, so this isn't a full review. I did own the previous T60 for three years, so check out that other review. I'll put a link to that um, below and uh, at the end of this so you can check that out. Um, overall though, what are my thoughts? I mean, hey, it's very similar to what I said at the end of the last video. It's a great 
valued you uh, well priced for what you get sure it's not going to have the performance and the towing capability uh, as you know the Ford and the Toyota and some of the Utes on the other Utes on the market but for the price point what you get in it's it's pretty good um, especially with the included uh, features and the safety rating etc whether you should buy this or the older gen you, uh, it's really up to you and what sort of price you can get. I mean, there is such a delay on new utes at the moment. Here in New Zealand, we have new taxes coming in, I think, next year as well, which is going to bump prices up even more. But the secondhand market is really ridiculously overpriced as well. So it's a hard one. I mean, the new one, you are getting the slightly, <laughs> you are getting the better suspension, uh, but you seem to lose out on the deck liner, which is a bummer. Um, so maybe you could get the old one and, and, use a little bit of money to upgrade the suspension and, and do it that way rather than getting this one and then having to fix up the, the deck liner uh, and then you still don't have the best suspension but again it's a bit tricky uh, as to what the market's doing and, and prices and everything like that um, if you do have any other questions again please leave them below if you have liked this give me a thumbs up uh, if you do want me to do any other videos with utes or compare this to another one let me know as well uh, again i'm not a car review guy i review other products check out all my videos on my channel be sure to subscribe i may do another full review in a year or two years time after i have put some true k's through this um so be sure to subscribe for that as well all right guys i hope you enjoyed this see you later